lives and turning it around, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your mighty presence, your mighty Holy Spirit working in us and through us today, Father. That this is your house. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that all things are possible. Lord, as we worship you and honor you, Father, we thank you, Lord. We call upon your name, the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for touching our minds and touching our bodies. That no weapon that's formed against us will prosper. Because, Jesus, you have defeated the evil one. You have defeated the devil. You have defeated every principality and power that stood before us when we fell from the beginning, Lord. You never fail because love never fails. And Father, we are here to prevail today in the love that you gave us through the name of your son, Jesus. That is power in the name. There's power in your name. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise today. Lord, our weapons of praise go up today, Father. The devil, you're defeated. We rebuke you in Jesus' name. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Our families will arise. Our children, our generations will arise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we speak to the darkness and command it to flee. Lord, will you send forth us as lights into this darkness and we command this darkness when we walk in it to flee. That, Lord, the darkness has no power over the light. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word takes preeminence in our lives and in our minds today, Lord. That we're mighty. We do mighty things in the name of Jesus because you are the King of Kings. And we thank you, Lord, for taking your place in our lives, placing us in a, pl in a position of victory in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said, Come to the house of the Lord. We're going to receive communion this morning. Well, let me step up here. Let me get a little bit higher. Hallelujah. Oh, there we go. That way I can free up my hands. I can set some things down. Amen. I just felt like today, you know, a lot of times I go to Corinthians when I talk about communion or go back to the Old Testament. But you know what? Today is Pentecost Sunday. I used to know, I just knew Sunday was my day of rest. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about before Christ, I stayed home and slept. I wasn't going to church. What's some crazy people doing going to church? I've been working all week. I'm going to sleep. Wrong. I said, wrong. This is the first place you need to be. This is my first day of the week right here, buddy. <laughs> Amen. It's coming here. Life dwells here. Love dwells here. God now, this is just a building, but when you come, God comes. Amen? Because we're his temple. Jesus came and walked on this earth that God, his father, created. And every time he walked, everywhere he walked, he was gaining victory for us. Amen? You've seen the, you've seen the, the paint that will leave the, down there at the beach. They'll have footprints in the sand. And they'll say, you know, your father, you know, God's helping you, watching over, protecting you. And, and, but you don't, you don't see but one set of tracks. And it's because God was carrying you through all those trials and situations. But, like, but if you don't know Christ, you don't have that victory. You don't have that testimony. You just have the monies. But when you get Christ, he doesn't bring the test. He brings you his word to defeat the test. Amen. Amen. God don't bring the trials. He brings the word. So you can defeat the test. Amen. Now, God will test you with good. He won't test you with evil. Amen. Because every good son before the father wants to send him out wants to know if he's ready. Amen. Well, I tell you what, Jesus was ready. I said he was ready. And when he got baptized in water and baptized by the father, by the Holy Ghost, he was ready. And he just didn't go to Jerusalem. He went to the wilderness to let the devil know, I'm here. The I am is here. The devil, he's not that smart. Amen. He used to be he decided he was going to be above God and then he got he lost his place of position he became real real dumb amen well today on as far as communion I want to go to Acts 2 1 with it being Pentecost Sunday just go ahead and claim yourself you're one of them <laughs> amen you're one of them that they that they made fun of it says and when the day of Pentecost was fully come that was one day that it fully come back then in other words, that was a sign and a wonder. It hadn't fully came yet, Randy, but it came 2,000 years ago 
when Jesus said, don't you get out of here yet, guys, after he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, he said, don't you go nowhere until you receive power from my Father on high. He said, don't you go yet. And he and said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was 120. Now, we don't have 120 in this church, but they're coming. I said, when they fully come, I said, they're coming. The praise team is coming. Because why you prophesied? There was angels in this room. There's angels in this room now. They inhabit, God inhabits the praise of his people. God's in here now. They're coming. We just don't want people. We want the ones God's called to come. Now, God wants everybody to come. I said he wants the whole world to come and get born again, but there's only certain ones that will come and stand up here that's gifted the call to lead praise and worship, to be a part. If that's you, let us know. Amen. Because the, the gifts and calling of God are without excuse. Amen. They're there permanently. So when the Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord, in that one place, one accord, what, waiting, doing what Jesus said. And suddenly, I like those suddenlies, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I, say, I think I see everybody sitting in here. You ready for it suddenly? My suddenly happened over 22 years ago, but I'm still looking for other suddenlies in my life. That was one suddenly I knew. Suddenly, I was changed. They were all sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. God is fire from the waist up, from the waist down. He's a consuming fire. You want to know what color God is? Don't look at black, yellow, all those colors. God's fire color. So when somebody asks you about color, say, I'm fire color. I like fire color. That's the way God is. Amen. He likes all the colors. If you look at fire, I think all the colors are in that fire. Amen. And it set on upon each of them. Why? To fill them. God wants to fill you with his spirit, with his power. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, however you want to say it, but it's all God. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and if you get filled, you're going to have something to say. They begin to speak with God's tongue, with God's language. Man couldn't understand it up to that point. They had never heard a language like this, so much that the whole crowd gathered and said, man, they must be drinking. They must be getting drunk. Yeah, they were. They were getting high on God. <clears throat> I've had Miller Lite, I've had Budweiser, I've had Jack Daniels and Jack Daniels and Jim Beam, but I tell you what, I got Jesus Christ and all the others won't do it. They won't fill you with God's presence. Only the blood of Jesus, only God's spirit is the only spirit you need to be filled with and overflowing with. Amen. They might call them spirits at the ABC store, but they're the wrong spirits. Come on. There's only one spirit that you need to be filled with and that's God's spirit amen. amen hallelujah and it will cost you something it'll cost you some faith and you will like you will like the hangover that you'll have because God will hang over you with mercy and grace they'll be new every morning amen hey I'm talking some good news this morning if our ushers will come forth this morning to serve we're going to pass out these elements that represents the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. And we're going to do something today by faith that they did over 2,000 years ago in the natural. They did something in the natural, but it was representing something supernatural. It was a Passover that God had told Moses to keep from generations to generations. Take a lamb, the firstborn lamb, spotless lamb. Take it, kill it, burn it with fire, and eat all of it. Eat it all. And take that blood, I'm talking about the old test, take that blood and put it on the doorpost, on the top and on the sides. And he told them, Moses told the children of Israel, stay in that house. Stay in the house because the death angel's coming. 
There was going to be a suddenly that was going to take place back then. Judgment was coming on all the ungodly that didn't have the blood. That didn't come, what, to the house of God. People, come on guys, there's a lot of people out there that don't have Christ. They are underneath the Old Testament wrath of God. They are underneath the Old Covenant if you're not born again. God still loves you. He still has mercy and grace. But the devil hates you. And unless you're in God's house, you are a target for the devil. And even when you get born again, you're a target. But guess what? We covered by the blood. If you're a Christian, if you're Christ's seed, if you're a part of the family, we have a better, we have God's covenant of protection, of blessing. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going we're to rub this in the devil's nose and say, guess what, devil? This is a happy day. We sang a happy song because we got a, we got a Savior. We got a risen Savior that loves us and cares for us, bled and died for us, and gave us the victory over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. We can go. That's a song that we have to rejoice with. So if you'll take the bottom of this, there's a little wafer in there. And Jesus took bread with his friends. He called them friends. He said, no longer do I call you my disciples. I call you friends. Hallelujah. God calls you a friend. And Jesus said, this bread, take and eat. Eat all of it. In doing so, and we remember the Lord's body that was broken for us. So that our body could be mended, be made whole. That's a spiritual force. And we believe it by faith. Take that body, take that bread. Believe for healing in your body, in your children, children's children. That we do this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus as he did for the whole world, all those that would believe. And then he took the cup. We take the juice. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. He said, this is a new covenant in my blood. Jesus said, I will not drink of this cup again until I drink it with you anew. One day we're going to get to drink a new cup with Jesus. But until then, we remember his blood and his sacrifice. And this is the life. The life that Christ Jesus gave us. The abundant life. So Lord, as we take this cup today, we, we thank you that this, this removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. That Lord, when you see us, you see Christ in us. We receive this life. We receive your life today, Lord. Everlasting life. The victorious life. And we thank you for it. And everybody said, Hallelujah. You can say amen too. That means so be it. Let's worship him a little bit.
refuge that Lord we can come to your house and know that we are protected Lord protecting us from all the storms that rage Father God your mighty mighty presence in this place in our lives Lord we thank you Lord Jesus that we can freely worship you in spirit and in truth today Father we thank you Lord for your holy angels that are camped about us Lord keeping us safe from the evil one from all those Lord that would that would want to take to steal, to kill, to destroy, Lord. You gave us your name. You gave us Jesus. You gave us your son. We thank you, Jesus, for standing with us, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to receive our offering this morning, and then we're going to honor our graduates that we have here in our church and those around uh, this area. And... Uh, Paul was speaking to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 2, concerning giving. And Matthew 6, 33 also speaks on this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you'll keep God first in your life, you won't be last. Come on. If you'll keep God first, you won't be last. He'll make sure of that. You won't be last in your giving. You won't be last. He'll make you first. He'll take you from the back and bring you to the front. What? To bring glory to himself. Say, that's my kid. That's my kid. Don't you, parents, don't you feel good when, you, when, when the principal calls your kid up front to give them honors? <laughs> Amen. Well, Paul said concerning the collection for the saints, we're getting, getting ready to bring a, a collection, take up a collection this morning of your best. Come on. Of what you've done best this week or what you've done. You, you, know, you might not be working a physical job, but you're still here, ain't you? You're still breathing. That means God's still got something for you to do. Amen. And he'll bless you continually. Concerning the collection of the saints, Paul says, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia. Now, I'm not over to Galatia, but I'm over to one in Concord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'll give you some, some instructions. Even so do ye. Paul gave too. Paul was a tent maker. He made his way. There was some I know that... Man, I remember Jack and uh, uh, Randy, when they first came here, Andrew was still having a tent meeting, and we would get there and set up a tent. And man, they, they, they come and they sign. I, I need some volunteers. They signed out for the whole week. They went, went and helped us set up a tent. There was plenty that came along and helped Paul, but Paul was going to do it regardless because he loved Jesus. If anybody helped him or not, he was going to make his way. 
He knew that God called him, and he didn't care who stood in his way. He was going to church. He was going to go preach that gospel to the world. And he told him, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay aside in a store as God had prospered him. And I tell you, God will prosper you. That there be no gatherings when I come. And that's where it says, when you come to church, don't be thinking about what you're going to give when you get here. As you purpose in your heart, make the purpose before you get here. You just want to come here. You've already, made, you've already determined what you're going to give. So you can come here and freely give it. And what? Just worship God. See, take care of all that before you get here. You, you might give monthly. You might give bi-weekly. It depends on how you get paid. But you know what? God is looking for our heart. He's looking for your heart. So let's stand together as you purpose to give. That God's called us to take his good word to the world. Wherever your feet go, tell people how good God has been in your life. Amen. He's given you the victory. Continual victories. Thank you, Jesus. Terry, would you come stand? I, uh, I did call that brother and uh, he didn't get back. Would you come stand this morning because he's a pastor? Just stand out here in faith that we're going to believe for God increase in his life. Yes. Uh, there's a, a brother, Tim Patrick's his name. Yes. God knows us by name. Amen. He knows the hairs we used to have on our head, how many we had, didn't he, Terry? <laughs> God is awesome. Praise God. And God knows the need before we need it. Yes. And he's already sent the supply. So we're here to agree. As we agree this morning, we're agreeing for a pastor that needs to see a harvest. Amen. Amen. See, God is his source. And God won't let him down. So, Father, we thank you for Tim Patrick. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your people as we give today, Lord. There's another shepherd out there, Lord, that is, has taught your word. And, Father, you said, David said, King David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed out begging for bread. Lord, we're not beggars. We're believers. Yes. We believe in the King of glory. We believe in the God, Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider, Jehovah Jireh. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs, meeting the pastor's needs, Tim Patrick's need. And, devil, we command you in the name of Jesus to get off, get out of our property. No trespassing. Whatever you've stole from Tim Patrick or us, double this year in Jesus' name. We call the double for our trouble. And we, and we pray for all of our enemies right now, Lord, all those that don't know what they're doing. Lord, we pray for their salvation right now. All those that have done us harm and are, and, are, and are doing other people's harm, Lord, we pray that they come to know Jesus. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can bring your tithes and offerings to the front. Hallelujah. come forward and Wayne you put that thing on automatic and come stand up here <laughs> is there an automatic button on there that's okay Kelsey's got us we're fine I want you to I want Wayne to come stand up here because he stands for he's got two uh, Samantha Honeycutt and Jordan let me say her name right Mashburn right we got two and then Ruthie Jackson here's a special gift for you and for Samantha and Jordan. And let's just release our faith up here for some hard work. We know we, we've been there. We've done that. So, Father, we just release our faith. We release blessings to Ruthie, to Jordan, Samantha right now. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for 12 years and 12, 13, 14, 16 years of, of going to school and, and studying, Father God. But we thank you, Lord. The main thing is they've got your foundation, Lord, that we have taught our children the word of God, and Lord, we have a promise 
for a thousand generations, Father God, that our children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of our children. So, Father, we call in that harvest. We call in that harvest of peace. Lord, where the darkness is, Father God, our children are children of vessels of light. And, Lord, we command the darkness. Lord, you commanded the darkness to be separated from the light. So we separate our children from darkness. They will walk in light, liberty, and they will fulfill every divine purpose and plan that you have put on the inside of them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And, and I'll give these parents, and Ruth, I'll give you an opportunity if you'd like to share something. Just whatever's on your heart, in season, out. Wayne's done, took off. <laughs> so uh, if you just want to just honor the Lord. <laughs> no, I, it's, it is truly a blessing. It's been a long time coming, but I know I'll probably definitely go back to school to get, you know, further master's and anything else. But right now I'm taking a break from doing any more education, even though I'm going back to high school to teach again. So, but even getting my job opportunity was definitely um, God working. Um, you know, I had done an interview prior to the one that I got the job from, but you know, it felt like home and it felt like a family and I didn't feel any, I don't know how to say it, but like my first job, I felt kind of like doubt, like, is this really the right place? But the second place, you know, um, everything I brought in, they were like, this is exactly what we do here. So, um, I knew in my heart that that was where I was supposed to be. Um, and it, came quickly. I didn't have to wait too long because, you know, God blesses us and I don't have to think about, oh, where I'm going to be. Um, but I know I'm going to be um, a light into any student's path and um, praying for protection, um, especially within the schools. Um, and yeah, but I'm excited to do my new journey. And um, I'll keep y'all, if y'all follow me on Facebook, you'll see any pictures or any updates about that. So... pictures are behind you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's been a long time, but I finally graduated. <laughs> no. Um, haven't been down that road so many times, and playing at graduations, and going to graduations, and all that stuff, and, and seeing, being a teacher, and seeing the ones, we have the high schoolers walk through the middle school, where they went to middle school, and they walk down the hall, and we have all the kids in the hallway, and they walk down, like, paraded through the hall. You should see the look on some of their faces. Some of them are like, I don't want to walk down this hall. That would probably be Jordan. But the look on their face of not only just relief that it's over, but the look of, what do I do now? And I, I know you feel some of that, too, with having starting a brand, started a brand-new job. But with what I see every day with the kids, it's tough. It's hard work. And even though I could tell you my side of I wish they would do a little bit harder work sometimes, it, it really is hard on them. And it's not just the academics. It's the junk around them. But as they navigate through and they see all the influences, and they pick and choose their friends, and they go these paths. That's why it's so important as parents and for a church to pray for them. If they have that spirit-filled Christian influence, whether that come from a peer or from a teacher or from a professor, wherever it's going to happen, God is with them. He is walking them in every situation. He is with them. And I don't really know what to say other than just pray, pray, pray. And I know you saw my re reply on Facebook to, to your thing. If I could give you any advice, do not be afraid to give God the glory. Because what are they going to do, fire you? <laughs> That's how I look at it. They need me. <laughs> you know? And God will, will put you in places and take you out of places, whether that be this school or this school, and he will put you exactly where you needed. 
And be involved in your community. Be involved in schools and go to the schools and, and see what's going on. And even if you just drive through the parking lot and pray, you wouldn't believe the difference. Amen. And having made a decision at the beginning of, of this year that I'm going to pray for every one of those kids every single day. You know, not that I didn't pray for them before, but it wasn't like constant and it wasn't a devotion. It was more of, you know, hey, Lord, please let these kids act right today, you know. But it was is one of these things of praying for those kids, the ones that didn't have food, the ones that came to school whose mom passed away over the weekend or, you know, and they're still there. <laughs> it's so important. And the difference that I saw this year alone tells me that I cannot not pray for these kids every day. I'm still praying for the kids that have already gone to seventh grade. So either way. Just know that it's it's so important that you be involved. Pray, pray over the pray, pray for all the dads this year, man. Sure. Lord Jesus, as you, I just pray that God, as you are on the throne and Jesus is on your right hand, that you send your angels with divine protection and divine health for these kids, Lord, and that you break any any terrible influence on them, any evil plans toward them, God, because you said those won't prosper. But God, I pray that you take these kids into the realm of exalting you, the realm of not only just being saved, but serving you, being an influence to their peers, Lord, becoming um, prophets at their age, Lord Jesus. I pray that, uh, God, you take them into success in everything they set out to do, Lord, because you called them before, before we were even born. You've called them all into a specific ministry, Lord Jesus. They all have a purpose. Even though they can't see it, and even though they don't feel it sometimes, Lord, I know, God, that you have a purpose for them. And Lord, as depression tries to overtake our schools, I bind it in the name of Jesus that you release your goodness and your glory and your happiness and your joy, Lord, I release it in the name of Jesus on these students. And Lord, I pray, God, that you protect all the teachers and students, Lord, from any outside influence, whether that be from a gun, from a knife, from, from a demon, whatever it takes, Lord, that those walls become your walls, Lord Jesus, that you put a hedge of protection around them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as these graduates go out and they enter into the workforce or they enter into college, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you have a path set for them, Lord, a path that is going to be so, so inside them, Lord, that they know that this is what I'm supposed to do and I have to do this and, and that, God, you're going to piece it all together, Lord. You're going to piece it all together so they can see, Lord, that the purpose is greater than them. And that, Lord, you're going to send help in their way, Lord Jesus. And I pray, God, that if they need help, that they not be afraid to ask, that they come to their church family, Lord, that they come to their parents and they ask for that help in the name of Jesus. But, God, put your blessings upon them. Let them be successful. And, Father, all in all, Lord, save them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Congratulations, graduates. And amen. 1984. Yeah, let's, uh, let's speak uh, our confession over our offering here. Thank you, Pastor Reed. I'll let you hold the plates. I'll keep my position up here. Thank you, Jesus. Say, so we, we have a confession because we have possessed something. When I possess Christ, he gave me something to say. That's a good way to say it. Amen? I just don't say what I want to say. I say what the Father says. Jesus said, I do nothing except I see the Father. So, Father God, we thank you today that according to your word in Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11, and all that you've said, that we're getting our lands and our places of employment, that, Lord, all of our debts are being eliminated, student debts included, and we will owe no man nothing but to love one another. Today, we claim our great and goodly cities, all of our houses full of good things, furniture, all those things, all our vehicles, and all the equipment and people that we need 
to preach and teach the word of faith to the world. Why? To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of them say they're ready, but they're not ready. Come on. I wasn't ready 23, 24 years ago. I wasn't ready to meet Jesus. And he made sure that I had something, some words, somebody around me. Romans even declares, nobody will stand before God and say, Lord, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't send me a witness. No, the, whole heaven, the heavens, even the heavens declare that there's a God. Amen? We are without excuse. I can remember, I can remember as a three-year, I can remember as in the first and second grade of kindergarten, I can remember, you know, my siblings were older than me, so I had to fend for myself. A lot of times, I didn't, they didn't want me playing with them. Why? Because I was a little baby. I was the baby of the family. I got everything. You know, I was the baby. But I wanted to, I wanted to mingle with my, my siblings, but a lot of times they didn't want me there. So I, I would be creative. Anybody remember deluxe ice cream? Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll, we'll go get some right now. <laughs> Well, de- Deluxe, and I'm, I'm not sure I haven't bought no half gallons in a while, but they had a big old lid, you know, Deluxe ice cream on that thing. I'd pull that lid off, Randy. I didn't have all the nice things, you know, scooters, motors, scooters, and I'd take that lid. Anybody remember watching Speed Racer? Yep. Go, Speed Racer. Go, Speed Racer. Go, Speed Racer. Go. Not like that. Though. Not like that. <laughs> he had the most awesome vehicle you'd ever seen. He could hit his steering wheel. He could go. If, if they were chasing him, he'd go off a cliff, and if he was going to hit the ocean, he'd push a button. And the, and the Jetson Mobile, the thing would cover up. He'd go underneath the ocean. The tires would go up in that thing. There's vehicles out there now that can do that. Come on. And he'd just keep on going. That's what my deluxe. I take that, that lid off, off that deluxe ice cream. It had D, D for drive. E, I, I had buttons that I would push. What was I doing? I was an imagination. I was not alone. I would look up at the clouds and know that there was a God. And there was trouble in my home. Daddy come home, trouble. Even when Daddy leave, I can remember the trouble when he came home. But I would go outside and look up in the sky and know, and I would pray in my own way as a kid to a God I couldn't see, but know that he was there and he was for me. I just couldn't, I couldn't establish a communication because my family was not in order. My, my, my dad wasn't serving God, but God was still loving me. He was still protecting me. People were still praying for me. But I was a kid, and I knew there was a God. And he knew me. He knew I'd be here today talking to you. So don't neglect the small beginnings in your life, those little things. That Anytime I hear that song that says, there's a song that talks about being in the wilderness. It's, it's a weary road, weary traveler. It's not a real positive song, but it's like a weary traveler. I'm almost home. I'm almost home. You know, this, this, home, this world is not our home. It's cursed. This earth is cursed because of sin. It's, it's going to be, the, God has to destroy this earth to create a new one. This is not our home. But God is with us while we're in this home. While we're in this cursed, dark curse, He sent Jesus. He sent His only Son to die for us, to be the punishment for our sin, to take the curse of that law to where we can walk in this cursed, dark world and be a light, and get people out of darkness into this light. Amen? By the power of Jesus Christ, by the power of the gospel. That's good news. We can have, I'm still on this title of, we can have good times in the end times. We're in the last of the last days. Before the, the trumpet's going to sound, the rapture of the church, then there's going to be a second coming. The Lord, There's going to be great tribulation that's going to hit this earth. We ain't seen nothing yet that's going to hit this earth because of judgment, because of sin. But I heard in my Bible where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Everybody ever seen Michael Jordan play basketball? Yes, Number 23. See, I thought about Rowan. He's going to be a grad, he's going to be graduating class of 2023. 20, I'm like, man, if I was his age, I'd, I'd link that to Michael Jordan. That'd be one I could remember. Michael Jordan, his number was 23. Back in high school, middle school, they said, you can't, you're not a basketball player. I think he proved them wrong. Come on. Michael Jordan could play some basketball. But let me tell you now, he's not as young as he used to be. He's not playing ball anymore. That was great then, but you, you got to have something. You got to have a, something greater than that, right? See, that, that, he was good at that, and God graced him with that, but you can't do that all your life. 
But you can glorify God in all that you do. Because without God, I couldn't jump. <laughs> Amen. And I can't jump nothing like Michael Jordan could jump. He would, he would what did they call him? Air Jordan. <laughs> Amen. They even named a tennis shoe after him. What's going to be your, when you leave this place, what kind of mark are you going to leave? What can, what can they say about you? Amen. It's what you do for Christ. I mean, it's what you do for others. You serve God by serving others. And, and before I go any further, I, I, I do need to do this. And uh, I haven't let anybody know this, but I just kind of feel in my heart this is a God thing. Judy and Leah, would y'all come forward? Would y'all come down here to the front? They don't know this either. But uh, God has graced us with wonderful help here at this church. Amen. Amen. And my, my prayer for everything that we do is we be three deep. So that when I go on vacation, y'all don't even know I'm gone. Pastor Jim's going to, he's going to continue this message. I got read. Well, the Lord says he has graced me with another set of ministers here. Come on, get, get, get not nice and pretty with this flower right here, right? There we go. We get a nice shot of Cindy uh, made us a nice arrangement up here. Thank you, Cindy, for this beautiful arrangement. She does a wonderful job, right? But uh, the Lord says, you are faithful. And y'all have be, y'all been doing his work for many, many years. And it's not about the titles, but I don't know, you know, I don't care about, when I say care about, what you've done in the past, what they, titles they might have said, hey, this is Judy Munger, such and such. But here at this church, we see you as ministers of the gospel. Amen. This is what God sees you. So my pastor in 2008 laid hands on me and ordained me, appointed me into the ministry that God had called me to do, but that's what they did in the Bible. They laid hands and set them apart for the ministry. Amen. So today I just feel like there's a setting apart. I don't know if that's been done in your life, but can I do that this morning by the power of God? Because, Judy, you are a teacher of the word. Leo, you're a minister of the gospel. you you got an evangelistic heart, but I see you as our... Pastor Reed, come on up here. Uh, Tammy's with, with uh, uh, Darius, but Reed is our associate pastor, and I think we're just going to install our third associates here. What do you think, Pastor Reed? I think they fit the... the I think the calling's there. Amen? So I see you as our third... Associates here. How's that sound? Now, I'm not putting a t- title of passion on you. I'm just calling you ministers of the gospel. I know you're a teacher. Because, see, God, what's God's put on the inside, and you serve, Leo. You serve the people. You protect God's house. And there's nobody else I'd want better if me and Reed's gone than you guys. Can I get an amen out here watching over this church? They're already doing it. You're already doing the work. So today we're going to lay hands on you. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We just impart uh, every, everything you've given me today, Father, everything you put within me, I release to Judy and Leo, Father God. The gifts and callings you put within them, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. We just set them, set them apart, Lord. We ordain them. We appoint them by the laying on of hands on the day on 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 Pentecost, Lord. There was a suddenly, Lord, and this is Pentecost Sunday. So, Lord, we just we just release the fire that's already on the inside. We just release it by faith to these ministers of the gospel right now, Father God, that what you're doing in their life, Lord, you're just going to raise it up a level, Father God, because they're already doing the work. But, the, Lord, we just thank you, Father God, that we're just setting them apart for that work and call them at this place, uh, uh, the, uh, the third of so, the pastors here at this place, Lord, to watch over and protect your house and your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's an honor to, to serve and be served with you guys. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I just want to obey God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reed. That anointing sets us apart. Hallelujah. For the work God's called us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I remember uh, Pastor Gary Cole said he was our first pastor that we were under in Mooresville. And we wasn't there too long. He put us to work, too. You know, and uh, because we had to, we man, we was we was wanting to do something. Me and me and Sherry, we was full of, we was full of God, full of love, and we knew God had called us. And he started jingling some things to me one day. He said, "Pastor, you know what what I'm doing here?" He gave me some keys. I said, "Yeah, that represents some. You trusted me with something here." And he said, "Yeah." Says this represents authority. And he gave me those keys to church. You know what it did? It just blessed me. Amen. It blessed me that somebody counted me worthy to be to be trusted over the opening and shutting of the church. But, you know, Jesus, man, when he calls you up, man, he, 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 he says, well, that's, that's well done. That's a blessing. That's an honor. So, uh, yeah, oh, gosh, okay. I wasn't expecting this. What I... 
when Robert and Sherry came to help me, I told her, I said, I'm, and we were just we started a new work. And so I said, uh, I want you to be over to women's ministry. She said, well, I've never even been part of a women's group. I said, well, you're the very one because most of them I ever saw wasn't doing it right anyway. <laughs> but then Robert, uh, he was already helping with the sound and stuff. And I said, uh, you need to be the head usher. So a couple of days later, he called me, and he said, I, I, he said, I looked, got on the Internet. I've looked up everything I could find about how to be an usher. He said, I want to meet you and talk to you about it. And so we met up at Hardy's up here on Church Street, and he showed me all this stuff he had pulled off of the Internet. But here's the magic thing he said. He said, Pastor, now here's all the stuff I looked up, but I want to find out how you want me to do it. So I tell you what, you can't yet be a good pastor until you've been a good minister of helps. Pastor Gary Price was that same way. He'd, he'd come up through the chain of being in the ministry of helps, and then, he, and then he's a good pastor. Amen. Amen. I received those words. Thank you, Jim. Pastor Jim. Did I say that right? Jim. 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 Think about Bishop Souza. I just got a word from Alex Mudeke, and uh, they'll be having his services this Friday is uh, home going, and uh, so be thinking about Bishop, and we'll be praying for Kenya. Kenya's in our heart. Uh, we will be supporting the Word of Faith ministers over there and uh, until God says otherwise. Amen. And uh, we'll be blessed. So you you still excited about having good times in the end times? Yeah. Even in, when, when all these things, and we hear, you know, things going on in the schools, and you know what? Jesus said, uh, when you see these things, don't look down, look up, for your redemption is drawing nearer than it's ever been. But he, Jesus did not leave us down here without his word, without some power. But there's a lot of people out there that don't know that. And we all, always wonder, why did, all this, why did all this happen? Because it happened in Jesus' day. I remember when Jesus was two years old, God gave his father, Joseph, his natural father, a dream. says, get your family and go down to Egypt. Why? There was an evil man named Herod who came and killed all the babies two years and under in Bethlehem, in, in that area, killed them all looking for one, looking for Jesus. Evil is still evil. It's still out there. But God is still God, and he is still on his throne. Amen? And he has given us his name, and he's given us his Holy Spirit. Amen? That we can stand in evil, and we can command in the name of Jesus for evil to cease to stop. Amen? But you've got you to know that. You've got to be baptized. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speak evidence of others. You speak in other tongues. That that just is showing us that you have. There's a power there, amen. And I'm speaking for somebody that never had hard enough time speaking in English, <laughs> let alone speaking in a, it's an unlearned language. But I still have to speak it and decree it. I'm inspired by the Holy Ghost, and I can speak in tongues. And I think pray in tongues more than you all. And I pray in tongues, but I need to pray more because what we're praying the perfect prayer unto our Father God who then what, get, fills us with his Holy Spirit. See, fills. My bottle down there is about half empty right now. Well, you could see it half empty or half full, depending on how you look at it. Well, sometimes as a Christian, we're running low. we half empty. We need, God wants us overflowing. That's not good for him. He wants us overflowing. Full is not God. God sees overflow. He wants you to be overflowing and saying something. In other words, prophesying, speaking, light in darkness. Amen. Calling it what it is. Calling evil, evil, and casting devils out. Amen. Taking authority over evil. The Bible said that, uh, there was one person that quoted, you know, don't, the, the only thing to let evil happen is for good people to do nothing. Amen. So we got something to do. We can have some good times. Good times is destroying bad things. This, Jesus came and destroyed the works of the devil. He was having good times in his time. He was going out there healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. What? With his word. It ain't got to be, the, it ain't a show. It's speaking life. And death has to leave. Amen. That's, that's, that's it. it. You don't have to have this big old show to cast out a devil. Jesus, you know, he would tell the devil, shut up, come out. That's all you need to know. But you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. You need to be able to discern that's a devil. And God, and that person don't want that devil. You can command it to come out. Hallelujah. I didn't know I was possessed with a lot of devils. I didn't understand it. But the anointing of God, they had to leave. I got, I got prayed for. I got delivered. It's called deliverance. 
by the anointed one. There was a minister that was anointed by God, and he drove out that spirit, those spirits. They had to leave. But I, I, had to, I went down to that altar. See, I went down to Jesus. I went down to get something, and I got it. I got delivered. Amen? See, you ain't got to understand this. You just got to believe it. You got to believe. First, you want God to do something in your life? First, you must believe that He is Creator. And He's not only is, that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You keep seeking Him, He's going to bless you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to prosper you. Amen? That's, that's what He does. As a parent, that's a godly parent. That's what we aim to do is to bless our children even when they're not blessing me. Come on, amen. The church sometimes not looking good to Jesus, but Jesus loves us regardless even if we're not doing what he tells us to do sometimes. He said, that's my bride. I'm going to continue to pray for her because that, that's not what she is, but she's getting ready to act like it. Amen, amen. Come on. Y'all look at me like y'all, y'all holier than thou out there, and no, I'm just picking with you. We all got flaws, but thank God Jesus loves all of our flaws. Amen. He was flogged, amen, for your flaws. Is that the way they say it? Flogged? 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 I, I tell you what, it was, it was terrible. But Jesus said we're, he made us worthy. Amen. So today, I'm going to pick up here a little bit. And I'm not going to say I'm going to finish. I'm just going to pick up on uh, part two, having good times in the end times. If you'll go to Luke chapter 5, verse 20. Subtitle, keep your faith in the now. Now faith is. Come on, keep your faith. How do you get faith? How does faith come? It comes by hearing God's, not my words, God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God Almighty. When faith comes, do something with it. Faith is now. Amen? Faith doesn't stack up. You can't stack up faith today and use it for tomorrow. No, faith is now. Use what you got now. Hallelujah. Luke 5.20, Jesus said, When he saw their faith, faith can be seen. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, look at you, man, your sins, whether it's male or female, your sins are forgiven. They didn't have to ask Jesus, Will you forgive my sins? He said, Your sins are forgiven. Why? They were, their faith could be seen. They were acting on what they believed. Keep that thought. Keep your finger there. Now go to Mark 2. I'm going to say this kind of slow because I didn't tell the AV team. I didn't give them my notes. Mark chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And I'm not going to turn to my Bible because I've got mine right in front of me. Mark 2, verses 3 and 4. This is a New King James Version. They came to him bringing a paralytic man who was carried by four men. Say four men. And when they could not come near the house because of the crowd, Jesus drew a crowd. That's Jesus. Amen. Jesus drew a crowd. They uncovered the roof. Anybody ever done any roofing in here? I've uncovered a lot of roofs. And he had to put the plywood back, had to put the shingles back on it before, before the rain came. Uh, Mama's house don't like to get wet if, you, if the roof's uncovered. They uncovered the roof where Jesus was. And when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Took this man, took him in his bed. I don't know how many miles or how many feet, how many, whatever they called it, cubits back in, in Jerusalem. I don't know how far he was from this house, but they drug him bed and all. Five people, four, four men and one paralyzed. You want to have good times in the end times? Find out where Jesus is. Amen? Find out where Jesus is. That requires now faith. Now faith is the substance. You want to see some substance? You need to have some faith. Faith brings the substance to where it'll, it'll be seen. Go ahead and find you at least four fanatics like Pastor Jack right there. He'd be one. I ain't going to pick them out here with everybody sitting here because I'll make some, make some of y'all feel bad. But there's a book, if you start to feeling bad out here, is there Jim? Is there some books out there? Because they, sometimes they go fast. If you get to feeling bad, uh, there's a book that says if you don't get offended, you get blessed. <laughs> Amen. So we got the antidote for your feeling bad. We got a book out here, and he's even preached on it. 
If you don't get offended, you get blessed because you're not here to please me. You're here to please God. Amen. And if you please God, you'll please the pastor. Because I just want you to please God. Amen. But seeing these, seeing great faith requires you not having weakness about being offended. What what are people going to say? So find you at least four friends that don't care what people think about you. (laughs) Amen. Four friends that believe Jesus is still working miracles today, now, in this place, through his people, through his church, and and that they believe now that all things are going to turn it around, going to turn it around. Amen. See, even though the situation hasn't turned, you see it turning around. That's now faith is the substance. And see, that's what Jesus is looking for. He's looking for people to declare it's turning around before it's turned. See, that gives God something to do. And he likes to do big things. We serve a big God. I tell you what, leasing an apartment in South Carolina, getting insurance, making sure you got insurance, making sure. I tell you what, there's a lot of, people require a lot of things to trust people. Don't they, Ruthie? But I thank God my checking account is bigger than it was 22 years ago that I can say, we can help you on that, Ruthie. Why? Because she hasn't got a paycheck yet. (laughs) She's got a job, but they don't start yet. But we serve a God that knew, amen, and that he, he blessed us by faith. But it required me to do something. Give. <laughs> I trust you, Father, and I'm going to give. I'm going to give to the. I'm going to give to you. I'm going to take my best out of this week, and I'm going to give it to the kingdom. See, I, I give. I pay tithes too. I don't pay tithes. I give tithes. Amen. I give tithes to God because He's my Father too. So uh, you need to have four crazy friends that believe Jesus still does miracles. We're talking about having good times in the end times. Surround yourself with people that love Jesus and love to wear the Jesus sandals. Amen. That call you Jesus freaks. I used to call people in high school, man, he's a Bible toter. One of them Jesus freaks. You reap what you sow. I sowed. I became one of those people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I became one. Amen. I tell you what, if you're mocking God ignorantly, God can still work with you. Amen. But to do it, to blaspheme the Holy Ghost, that ain't good. To know that's God and say that's and, and, and call it evil, that, you know, don't, don't be getting, don't, be, don't, don't walk that road. So, so we must be saying, it's my time. This is my generation. And it's good to read and hear about the old timers, Smith Wigglesworth, a plumber that had a, didn't have much of an education, but knew God. God done miracles through his life. But see, he's in heaven now. But that same spirit of faith is still in the earth. And it's in God's church. So we must be saying, it's my time. This is my day. You want to have good times in the end times? This is my place. Amen. Faith is now because once we get into the now, then all things become possible. Hallelujah. If not, you're just just waiting on Kirk to beam you up into the Starship Enterprise because that's another place all things are possible. If you follow, if you're, well, I'm not big on Star Wars. I'm a Star Trekkie fan. (laughs) <laughs> but those things that's happening on the movies back then they're getting ever closer but God still gives people imaginations to believe the impossible to go where no man we're going somewhere that no man has been before one day amen, amen. amen. there's men there in heaven I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay close to where I am right now I don't want to get too far off the base Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek down here But what he was doing down here was going up there. See, Melchizedek represented Christ Jesus. You don't hear much about him after that. Thinking maybe that was Christ incarnate in the earth. He paid tithes to Melchizedek. I think he was king of what? Salem. He was king of Salem. Jerusalem. Salem. He was priest of the Most High. That's King Jesus. Amen? And And he... I better stick here. Let's stick where I'm talking about having good times in the end times. We must be saying it's my time. All things possible 
All things can become possible. Genuine faith must be seen. Genuine Bible faith has to be seen and heard. Amen. You can see it. You can hear it. You can almost taste it. His faith is now. Amen. Because God is, God is, now, God is alive. Uh, you're out there in Mark. Uh, turn on over to Mark chapter 5. Matthew, Mark chapter 5. Having good times in the end times. Mark 5, verses 28 through 29. Here's, a, here's another woman that knew about faith now. She didn't have television back then. She didn't have YouTube. She had somebody heard about Jesus. She had the, the hearing of the gospel. She had heard about Jesus and the miracles that he was doing now. Amen. She heard it back then that he was doing them now. She didn't have to wait the Sunday. He was doing them now. She said, if only I may touch his clothes. Randy, we had a testimony. We took a cloth. We took an anointed cloth that we took Wednesday, last Wednesday, anointed it because he asked for prayer. The Lord said, the Holy Ghost said to me, why don't you go get one of those cloths? And we've already anointed it. Release your faith in it and send it with Randy and send it to the person that's believing. This lady touched the clothes of those that the Bible represents Jesus. He's in the Word. He's the living Word. We took our faith, now faith, Wednesday night, and we released it for Randy into that cloth and got a testimony that he's getting better. Amen. He's getting better. A whole lot better. That's what I like to hear. Jesus made them whole. This lady right here said, for she said, her doctor didn't say this, she said. Her doctor said, she didn't have no more money, Wayne. The doctor said, there's no more hope. Vicky's not here, but the doctor said there's nothing else they can do for her. But God, with God, all things are possible. She's in a good church that hears about now faith is. Thank God for Dr. Luke. Thank God for her doctor. But he said, I can't do nothing else. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. That Jesus said, I can, I will. Be whole, heart. Be healed, hips. Man, we got people getting healed in their hips and their heart. Why? Because Jesus is alive. And we believe. I said, we believe. And she said, if I may just touch the clothes of Jesus, touch his clothes, I, what? Shall be well. I shall be well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. See, immediately is suddenly his twin brother. <laughs> immediately. Why? Faith had been saying, if I can just but touch. He didn't have to say a word if I can just touch him. But see, if you were unclean, you couldn't go. If you had a blood issue back then, you're supposed to say, I'm unclean. You can't even get. Don't you do that. But she's crazy for Jesus. Amen. She said, I don't care what your law says. My heart is saying, I'm going to touch him. Amen. And that's what you got to do. You got to go past what religion says. See, religion will always tell you what you got to do. A relationship will tell you what Jesus has done. For you. Amen. That's a big difference. I said, there's a big difference. There's two R's there, but a religion will never get you a relationship with Jesus. It always, you'll always come up short. What was that? A dollar short and a day late. <laughs> Amen. That's called religion. That's because you trusted in yourself. I want to have good times in these end times. I want to see Jesus glorified. I want to see his church stand up and be the church. And we're going to be that church, amen? We're going to be the church that, that when people come in here, they get saved, they get healed, they get delivered. But why? Jesus is here. Now faith is. And it says immediately her blood was dried up and she felt. It's okay to feel. When God touches you, you should feel different. When you get born again, I've been born once and I've been born again. And I am different, amen? There's a difference. Hallelujah. And she felt in her body that she was healed from that affliction. Healed. Why? Because she said, faith hears and faith speaks. See, see if we'd been back in the streets in Jerusalem in those days and passed by this woman, we would have had her, heard her speaking, not whispering. She, we would have heard her speaking. For she said, I'm, doing, I'm going to go touch his clothes. I'm going to go touch his clothes. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I'm going to get 
what I've been believing. She was speaking that in the streets of Jerusalem. And boom. And she was confessing her faith. Now. This is what she was going. She was seeking. She was diligently seeking what she believed. Say, I'm having good times. Oh, no. I'm having good times in the end times. Because God is good. All the time. Amen. He is always on time. Hallelujah. See, that was, that was faith speaking and faith acting. Now, what we're experiencing right now is called corporate faith. This is cool. We've got more than one here. If you've got a business, if you've got more than one, I know Jim has had a business at one time. It was called a corporation. It's more than one. Amen. We've got the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and we've got all of us that believe in like that. We've got corporate faith here being, what are we doing? We create an atmosphere of faith, a Bible faith, miracle work in faith. Hallelujah. Faith that can be seen, seeing a pastor. I've never seen him, Terry, but by faith, believing God's working miracles in his finances. God's got a place for him and going to lead him and guide him. Amen? We're believing before we see. Corporate faith, uh, Luke, go back to Luke. I'll tell you what, just say, Luke 5.20, when he saw their faith, he said to the man, saying it again, your sins are forgiven. See, these four crazy friends represented that corporate faith. If two of you, well, they got four, two of you shall agree, touching anything, it'll be done. That's faith now. Faith is now, agreeing now. These four crazy friends represented corporate faith, so it matters who you spend your time with. It matters who you hang with. Corporate faith will see a full house with no way possible to get in and have an idea. Hey, let's go get a hammer. Somebody gets an idea. Hey, let's go get a hammer. There's nobody guarding the roof. <laughs> Amen. They're guarding the door, but nobody's on the roof. I know where a ladder and I got some hammers. Come on, guys. It's probably one of those terracotta roofs, probably. Noisy roof, too. Breaking in. <laughs> Here they go. Here goes those crazy friends. Follow me. I got a plan. That's probably Pastor Jack back in them days. You probably come. There's probably some of the tribe of uh, Lumbee. Lumbee tribe was probably in the streets of Jerusalem. Say, come on. We can get in that house. No problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of them are probably firemen nowadays with ladders. You know, you can go to three-story floors. What am I doing? I'm just creating an image for you here. All things are possible to believers. Amen. Amen. Believers will find a way to make it possible. With God. Amen. We'll just find a way. We'll find somebody crazy that believes that Jesus is still the way. Amen. He's still the way through the wilderness. He's still the way to get the schools to bring him back, bring, bring some literature back in that is good reading, that brings not only good reading, but brings the presence of God back into school, back into our courtrooms. Come on. That's the problem. They just don't want to hear it. Amen. Jesus says... I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So you can't, you can't, uh, stay here. Corporate faith will knock a hole from the natural into the supernatural. Getting the picture from the natural into the supernatural. Hallelujah. Having good times in the end times. You know what this year actually is? Some of you Bible scholars might know. This is the year of Jubilee. 21, 22, the year of Jubilee. That's the year when the Jews, there's seven sevens. There's, there's six years you work and you let the, let the land rest. That's called the sabbatical year. Am I right, Jim? Sabbatical. That seventh year, you let that land, land rest. Every seven, seven, seventies, seven times seven, 49 years, the next year is called the year of Jubilee. That's where all debts are forgiven. Come on. That was the year when Jesus walked into the synagogue. This is the sabbatical year of Jubilee, 21, 22. Now, the Jews keep that. My God, could you just imagine if we kept it? Everybody that's in debt, your debt's forgiven. You know how that would make somebody feel that's in debt? 
Oh, we, they would be writing the happy song. Amen. Not only say they'd be the one writing it. I right, turn to Luke 4. Matthew, Mark, Luke. My gosh. Hallelujah. It's early. <laughs> Some of you will get that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God is transforming my mind. Hallelujah. Luke 4. And I'm about out of paper out here. Don't get too nervous. Don't get too anxious on me. Luke 4. And I want to make sure I'm at the right verse here. Yeah. Luke 4, verses 14. And it's good to go ahead and read back for your, for your, to really get some good on this. Go back to the beginning of chapter 4. That's when Jesus goes out there and takes it to the devil when he got filled with the Holy Ghost and went to the wilderness. But this is after he'd done defeated the devil, all those temptations, which was three of them. And we start in verse 14. It says, Then Jesus, after he'd been tempted, and every time that he was tempted, he, he reminded the devil that it's written, because the Father said, It's written. And Jesus returned. If you'll say what God says and be filled with his spirit in the temptation, you'll get power. You'll start lighting up. You'll be illuminating the glory of God. Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and news went out throughout all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth. Does anybody know that's where Jesus, that was his hometown. They knew him there, knew him from a little boy. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue and on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. His eyes just fastened on this right here. The Spirit of the Lord, let's just say this together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh, man. Not only is God upon you, he's in you. The Spirit of the Lord, it said, this is Jesus, Jesus, this happened to him. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. It had already happened. He just, he just spoke to the devil. Man, he's feeling, Jesus is having a good time. In the end, man, he is having some good time right here. He is feeling it, Randy. He's feeling it. He just took it to the devil. And he's feeling this power. And then he's teaching. He's going to the synagogue. And what did he open up the book and found exactly what's happening? He has found out, y'all remember, who was it? What's happening? Y'all remember that one too, don't you? JJ. JJ. Yes. Jesus found out what's happening in the earth right now. Faith. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Why? He just defeated the devil at his own game. And recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim Jubilee! It's the year of Jubilee. All debt, Jesus, is the reason for Jubilee. This is it. This is the Spirit of God is upon me for this Jubilee. Everything's forgiven. Your sin debt is forgiven. Hallelujah. And Jesus felt good. Man, he's having a good time right here. Awesome time. Revelation. And I just want to read what Isaiah, he prophesied. Isaiah prophesied this. Kelsey, just get it for me. Isaiah 61. That starts with an I. Isaiah, <laughs> chapter 61, verses 1. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is what Jesus was feeling. Because the Lord, Jehovah, has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. That's any prison that's got you bound. To proclaim the acceptable year, Jesus is saying, you are acceptable in my Father's house. And the day of vengeance, God, vengeance is a good word. That's justice. In other words, Jesus is getting ready to bring some justice to all this evil. Of our God to comfort all that mourn. That's Zion talking about the church. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He ain't heavy. Jesus, he's my brother. Amen. You got some heaviness? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees. Come on. Trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. We're going all the way to verse 11. 
and they shall build the old waste. They, God's talking about us now. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Now, he's talking about Israel, but he's talking, we are, we are a spiritual Jew. We're going to do this in our place. Amen. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Somebody calls us kings and priests unto our God now. That's who we are once you get born again. Men shall call you the ministers of our God, Judy and Leo Munger. God just called you out. He calls you ministers. Amen? I didn't know that. I didn't plan that, but right there it is. Right there it is. He called me to be a minister before I even knew what a minister was. Come on, that's faith is now. God called me before I even knew it. Why? Because he's smarter than I am. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have, come on, what year? What's our theme this year? For your shame you shall have double. And for, Now, wait a minute now. That means you got to stand before those that's going to shame you. But you just got to know, I'm getting double. Come on. Just go ahead and shame me. Watch God doubly bless me. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Say, I'm possessing the double. When? Now. Amen. This is God's land. Hey, the land of the free, home of the brave. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery. God, guess what? He hates the devil. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. This was spoken thousands of years. And their seed, Wayne, Ruthie, their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord, come on, has blessed. We're getting close to the end, but this is so good. I just, we just might say it again. I will, re, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord when? Now. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. I'm going to tell you something. You're a jewel for God. He's wearing you right now. We are his bride, and he loves to dress up his church. Come on. We don't have good times in the end times. God's going to dress you up with salvation, with healing, with a sound mind in the end times. Come on. This is who God thinks of us. And he saw us, he saw when Jesus walked into darkness, he saw light. Amen, because God is light. And in him there is no darkness, there's no shadow of turning. Hallelujah. When you see us, when you see your shadow, say, I'm not going to be like that all my life. I'm going to a place where there's light, everlasting light. There's no shadows in heaven because there's no darkness there. There's not even a hint of darkness. Come on. You can get Tostitos with a hint of lime. I tell you what, once you've tasted, you know what lime is. Well, we've tasted darkness, but come on, Randy, one day we're not even going to be able to take, we ain't even going to see no shadow no more. That's how much God wants to light up your life. Amen. Because of righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus, that's Jubilee. That's what Jesus, that's what came upon him when he read those words. He had already read Isaiah. But the Spirit of God, it was upon him now. It was upon him to go out here and preach the permanent jubilee. We don't, it's permanent now because Jesus is ascended above all principalities and powers. And there's present jubilee. We don't have to wait for the sabbatical year. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Come on. I, I'm, I'm excited about this now. You can't study the Word of God and not get excited. But you've got to study the old and the new. And you got you got you got to, you can't, Jesus fulfilled it. Amen. you got to see the shadow that he fulfilled. Jesus was trying to bring jubilee to his hometown of Nazareth. He's always bringing jubilee because he's our permanent jubilee. But they just couldn't see it. They were so hardened by religion, but that didn't change Jesus. He was still anointed with joy. He had the Holy Ghost without measure. Come on. And he didn't look at what he saw. He only looked at what he knew. And he knew his father. And where he saw death, Jesus saw life. 
Anywhere he saw darkness, Jesus said, I'm going to bring light. The Father's going to bring light. Jesus always brings healing. Oh, that's weak. Jesus always brings healing. He always brings deliverance. He came to, to destroy poverty. In your bondage, any addiction, Jesus can set you free. I tell you what, he's a saving Jesus. He's a healing. Oral Roberts knew him as a healing Jesus. Wait a minute, I think there was a little bit more on my notes. That kind of made me feel like that when I heard that. Thank you. I might not have wrote that down. But I kind of sensed that. Kenneth E. Hagin knew about a, he knew about faith. He was a, he was what you called, he was, Brother Hagin was skilled. He specialized in teaching faith. Oral Roberts specialized in teaching faith. Healing and miracles. Why? Because that's what God did for him. He had, what was that? Uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculo I can speak it in tongues. <laughs> tuberculosis. <laughs> he, was, he was dying. He, there was nobody that could heal him but God. And then you know what God did for him? There was a gift in there. And because God, everything God does for you is not for you, it's for others. Now, you understand that. God will heal you so you can go out and heal others for him. Bring glory to him. And when God delivered me, he's going to use me to deliver others. Jack, just like you, you're going to go out and deliver others. You're going to bring hope to others. That's what the Holy Ghost, that's what his power and purpose is for. God called me to specialize in faith. And he sent me some good faith teachers. Dr. Gary Price, Dr. Jim Howard, Gary Colstead, fathers, of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. I recommend you spend some time in it. That is the great hall of faith. Amen? Everything you do for God is going to require faith. So don't let anybody, and I say anybody, Google Word of Faith. You'll find a lot of crazy things said about Word of Faith. But I would, I would, I would inquire inquiry minds to go read Romans 10, 8 through 10. Because it says this same spirit of faith, this word of faith that I bring to you is in your heart and is in your mouth. This is the word of faith that we preach. Amen. This is what we preach here at this church. It's the word that God puts in my heart that comes out of my mouth that will change your life. Amen. Amen. That's the word of faith. Amen. That's Jesus. Faith is now. And I'm ready to have some good times in the end times. All the way down when I go to Ocean Isle Beach, I'll be sitting underneath the umbrella reading, studying, but I'm going to be... If anybody comes to me, they're going to get some faith. Amen? Because I'm, 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 I'm going to stay full of faith. See, I don't go on vacation to get less faith. I won't go on vacation to get more faith. Amen. I just go on vacation just to get away from working on appliances. Because I, I really don't enjoy working on appliances, but I enjoy mowing and preaching the Word and, and sometimes cooking, cooking breakfast. I love eating breakfast. I really love eating. I enjoy eating. Y'all can tell. <laughs> Manifestation, you don't have to believe that by faith. You can tell. I just need to change the little, how much I eat. Some, and I am. I'm working on some things. I'm sure God's working on some things in your life. Amen? Amen. I ain't got there, but I've left. <laughs> and I, that's all I'm going to say about that. Hallelujah! Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We're going to have some good times in the end times, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a new mind. Let this mind be in us. Let it be continuously in your presence, Lord. Lord, when these thoughts and doubts of fear come to us, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving us the authority to, to tear down those strongholds. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for the end time harvest. The souls that are out there, Lord, looking, they're looking for supernatural. Lord, we want to give them you. So Father, we just thank you, Lord, for filling us with your presence and your power. And if anybody's there in this church or, or online and you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost to where you speak in God's other language, you speak in a heavenly language, don't leave this place. Let us pray with you. Let us agree with you. You need to be baptized and speak in tongues. You need to be operating in the power that God has de delegated to his church. And if you don't believe it, start believing and start receiving. You don't have to beg. Just receive that gift. Say, Lord, I want to speak with other, Lord, I want, to I want to be filled with your spirit. And Jesus will baptize you with power for a purpose, to be a witness, an effectual witness that will go out here and be bold to lay hands on the sick. That will be bold to, to take.
take money that you don't even, that you're struggling with and bless somebody else and say, Lord, you said you'd meet all of my needs, not according to Bank of America, but according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, we believe that. And Lord, we're going to fight the good fight of faith. And we're going to see, we're going to see the open, we're going to see the blind eyes open in this place, in our community. Lord, we're going to see the, we're going to see the, the, those that are on the bed of sickness arise in Jesus' name. Yeah, we call him out. We call Shane out. We've already called him out. We've called him up in Jesus' name. Lord, your word is alive. Your word is quick. And Lord, we're here to, we're here to speak your word. And you're here to demonstrate it with signs and wonders, Lord. We give you our faith, Father. We give you the words, your words that we put in our heart. Lord, we give it back to you as faith seed that you take it and you meet the needs of the people that we come around, Lord. That we see harvest of healing, harvest of, of sound minds, Lord. Uh, we speak to, we'll speak to people that have thoughts of suicide. And Lord, we'll turn them to thoughts of life that comes from only knowing Jesus, the Prince of Life. Lord, they're stuck with the Prince of Darkness, but Lord, He's, he's a liar. And Lord, you've sent us to bring the truth. And Lord, we'll, you'll send us. Lord, send us, as, send us as ministers of fire, Father, into these darkness. And Lord, let us drive out. Let us consume this darkness. Let us consume these people with your, with your consuming fire of love and deliverance. Thank you, Father God, for giving Wayne songs of deliverance, Lord. That, Lord, he'll be ministering to songs that will bring deliverance to people that come in this church, that come around him, Father God, in Jesus' name. We give you the praise for that, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Jim. I thank you for the word that's burning on the inside of him, Father God, the revelations. Lord, the books that's in him, Father God, just like you surrounded uh, the men and women in the Old Testament, Lord, the prophets, Lord, you would send them people that would help them fulfill their destiny, to write down the writers, Lord. We just thank you right now that you help Pastor Jim. Everything you've, you've put on the inside of him, that you've deposited on the inside, Lord, you're going to help him bring it on the outside. That, Lord, he's ready to take, he's ready to take his mountain. Lord, he's not only ready to take it, he's ready to move some mountains, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, you are awesome. We give you the praise, Father. We thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for, for Terry and for his family, Father God. That, Lord, there's always, it's like there's been some hindrances there that haven't been moved yet. But, Lord, we're, they're still moving. Lord, we still, we're still speaking faith right now, Father God, that he's going to see. He's going to see mightier things than thee he's seen yet. Because of your spirit, because of his heart, Father. Because of his heart of compassion, Lord, we just thank you right now. He has the victory, Lord. He knows where that victory is. He has the living water on the inside of him, Lord. And he's going to water his family with those words, those words of faith, those words of faith. Lord, he ministers in songs of worship. We just thank you, Father God. You're fighting those battles, Lord. Driving them out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh unto thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.